Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and here I'm going to show you how to set up the Noctua NHU-12A Chromax Black. In this video, I'm going to show you both the setups for Intel and AMD AM5 platforms so that you can use this cooler. And I'm going to show you a few different tips on other things that you can buy to make your life even better and the setup process for it, which will improve cooling performance. Now, this is a compact little cooler, a nice little air tower, which won't interfere with your RAM, but will still give you good cooling and quiet cooling as well, which is pretty important. There are quite a few things included in the box, as well as obviously the tower itself with a little cover to protect the plate that sits on top of your CPU. And notice some key things here, including the Noctua logo, and the slight different design to the bottom of the way it connects. More on that later on. And then you'll see the fans included already have the mounting coupling on them, so they're ready to go on. And the installation for those is really straightforward. The install is actually pretty simple, but I'm going to give you a few tips on it for both setups, as I said, AM5 and Intel LGA 1700. And I'll leave links in the description to other things that might be useful too. But the box itself you'll see is sorted conveniently with Intel on one side and AMD on the other, which makes life a lot easier than getting everything out of the box and then being overwhelmed by it, as I've done here. So basically pay attention to the box when you open it up and you'll see which things you need depending on what motherboard you're building with. Well, you can see there's a lot of things included in here as well as some cables, which are low noise cables and a Y splitter. More on that in a little while, but I'm gonna show you the standard setup for the best performance possible. Now it's also worth noting that you can get additional things such as these AM5 offset bars, which are used as additional mounting brackets, which basically replace the standard ones that you can see here with slightly offset ones for improved performance additional purchase you don't necessarily have to get. Now I'm starting with the AM5 socket install with a Ryzen 7 processor on this Gigabyte motherboard and I want to show you the setup for that. Obviously naturally you have to install your CPU first. Hopefully you're aware of how to do this but gently seat it down over the pins taking care to be as gentle as possible so you don't bend any of those pins when you put the cpu in because that will potentially damage the motherboard and render your computer inoperable or at least problematic and then seat the latch back down and secure it into place now one of the other things that's useful to purchase and consider for am5 is this thermal paste guard cleaning set so what this is is a very simple setup from noctua and reasonably affordable and it basically is a little kit that includes not only some thermal paste wipes so that you can clean up your cpu in the future but also a little plastic housing that goes around the outside of the cpu the idea of this is basically to sit over the amd cpu and then block those notches around the edges so that you can't accidentally get thermal paste over the edges and then crusted around the cpu it's really simple to install as you can see they basically just place it over the top and then you secure the cooler down later on for the installation of this you need to first of all remove the standard bracketing from the am5 motherboard so unscrew the brackets as you can see here and then just pop them out of the way because we don't need those then you need these gray washers which will then sit down over those standoffs that come through the motherboard from the rear back plate and we're going to put those down in the four corners. Then if you're using the standard bracketing, you'll use this one, which is then MABA7. As you can see, it's marked this side up, so you'll be able to see which way around it goes. And you'll need the long screws to secure that back into place and then push down through the washers that we put in place and screw it into the standoffs that are seated on the motherboard itself. Obviously, you need to secure these down as tight as possible and make sure that's ready to hold your cooler in place. So you're basically seating one of those on either side. So repeat the steps again. As I said, making sure that you look for the labeling where it says this side up on it. And that's obviously key. And that's important with a few different things with Noctua design is that was good labeling on it to make it clear what you're doing. So you then have it secured into place and then what we need to do is put the thermal paste down. Now, thermal paste application is up for much debate, and Noctua has some tips on the best way to put it on for your CPU that you can find in that manual. Then we need to get the cooler itself, and you'll notice there's a plastic cover on there that you need to remove. Also pay attention to which way around you install this, because you'll notice 
that the bracketing is slightly different, so it's actually longer on one side than the other. So you want that Noctua logo on the left-hand side, as you can see here, and then secure it down on top of the two screws that come out of the middle of the brackets we put on the motherboard already. Now you need to tighten the two screws on either side, doing a few turns on each of those to secure it. So gently do a few turns on each to get that secured down, and then keep repeating that until you can't tighten any more. So basically just keep going not mega amounts of pressure, but just until you can't tighten it anymore. So it's nice and secure. Next, we then need to think about the wiring. So I want to quickly show you that you need the CPU fan connector on the top right of your motherboard. Now, the fans have one cable coming out of each of them, and there is a Y splitter cable included, which you can connect those cables together into a single connector. Now, this can be used to then connect it up directly to the CPU fan. Alternatively, you could connect one fan to the CPU header and then one to CPU optional as another way of doing it. It's also worth noting that there are low noise cables included in the box as well. Now, I'm not using those because I think performance is more important. And my experience is actually that this cooler is surprisingly quiet, even with the standard cabling. So I wouldn't recommend using the low, low noise cables personally. Now for the mounting of the fans, I'm gonna quickly demonstrate that you've got these metal clips on either side. The clips are actually put in place in the logical way. So both fans are already set up and ready to go. You want to make sure that both fans are facing the same direction so that they are pulling air from the front of your case and exhausting through the radiator and out the other side and then out of the rear of your case as well in a logical way. So that means that for the fan on the left hand side, the back is facing outwards and the front of the fan faces towards the radiator. And then for the other fan, it's facing the other way in the same direction so that the back is touching the radiator and the front of the fan is facing the other way. So it should end up looking like this where you can see that set up there. Now the prongs on either side are basically used to secure it by hooking them over the fins on the radiator as you can see. So you can actually adjust it and move them around. So if you find that you mounted the fan a bit higher, a bit low, you can easily maneuver it out of the way and adjust that so you can fix it. And it's securing is pretty straightforward and it's pretty hard to get this wrong because unless those metal clips have come off for some reason, as I said, the fans are basically set up so they'll be in the right direction when you install them but you need to make sure that the airflow is facing the right way because you want to be pulling the air through and you also don't want either of the fans fighting each other so you wouldn't want to face them the opposite way so that the fans are both facing the wrong way for example that would just confuse the airflow and cause problems so from above that looks like this again looking for the Noctua logo so you can see what the Noctua logo is doing on both the fans and on the cooler itself and get an idea of the correct positioning for these things. So that is the setup there. And then obviously you need to plug the cable into the CPU fan header and then basically it's ready to install in your case. And that's the basic setup. If you want to improve that setup even more, you can use the offset mounting bars, which are an additional purchase. But these are designed to give you improved cooling performance by offsetting the cooler ever so slightly. So it's just seven mils difference in them. Basically, they adjust it so that the cooler sits a little bit differently on the CPU and knock to a claim somewhere between one and three degrees C temperature difference with this as well. You will see the bracket is slightly different here and basically it sits a little bit lower. So you need to adjust it by basically seating it where that seven millimeter hole is. So you screw that through the washer instead of the standard one and then it will sit a little bit lower. So these would be in place of the standard brackets, obviously you wouldn't use the standard ones that come with the cooler and instead you'd opt for these ones. You'll see the difference between them if you put one side by side so you can see the new ones on the right and then the standard one on the left. You'll see just how much difference that makes. You'll also notice that there are markings for the CPU arrow pointing where the CPU's got to be so you can't put them on the wrong way around. Just pay attention to the labeling on these brackets and you'll get them correctly seated there. So that's important too. Obviously repeat the process on both sides and secure those new brackets down so that they're the right way and then repeat the same sort of mounting process as before so we can use that thermal paste guard apply our thermal paste to the center of the cpu and then obviously seating the cooler down over the top and securing it in the standard way as i demoed this should hopefully then improve performance even more and considering this is a noctua cooler with good performance fans you should find 
that it runs really well. Indeed, in my testing, it has seemed to be very quiet and offer very good cooling performance as well. So it's nice that way. And the other thing you'll notice is we're not blocking the RAM ports here either, so you can easily install your RAM after the cooler, which other larger coolers can cause problems with. So that's good to see that there's no issues there. Now we look at the install for the LGA 1700 with this MSI Z790 Edge TI Max Wi-Fi motherboard. I'm using a Core i9-13900K for this process and basically the setup for this is really straightforward because we have the separated box as I showed you earlier on so you just need to make sure you've got the Intel stuff. There is a back plate that needs to be applied and you need to set that up first of all. So it looks like this and you need to pay attention to the labeling on it because it says this side must face the motherboard. So basically that's got to face the back of the motherboard when we install it. So pay attention to that, make sure you get this the right way around. This is actually used for LGA 1150, 1200 and 1700 sockets. But for 1700, which is the one we're doing in this build, you're going to use the far corners. There's a diamond shape in each of these four corners and you need to put these screws through there and make sure they're secured into the furthest part of that. There's some diamond shaped notching on the screws. So you basically you just need to line up the pointy bit with the corner there, push it through and secure it into place. And then there's a little plastic clip that you then put over the top of the screw to then secure it down to the bracketing. So basically the four screws go on, then the four clips go on each of those screws to hold it in place and these standoff screws will then pass through the motherboard and bop out the other side. So we need to put it on the back of the motherboard. So the best way to do this is with the motherboard out of the case, unless you have a case where you can access the back of the motherboard through the rear of the case, which isn't always obvious. You can see we flip the motherboard over and then you just need to put that back plate down in place. Again, making sure you've got the right way around and then pop it down and push it through. Just line it up as I'm doing here and then push that through to the other side. And then once it's on the other side, what we need to do is use the blue washers that are included in the box, put them down over the four screws and that will then supply some standoffs for the bracketing that we're going to put on in a second. These brackets have markings on them which say 3, 2, 1. So those depend on what socket you're using. We want to get it into two so the hole two on there which is the middle of the holes and then use these thumb screws to secure it down onto the washers pay attention to it because it's a little bit tricky to get that in the right place but you do need to make sure the brackets are in the right place and that it's secured properly obviously this will be different for different circuit motherboards but for lga 1700 that's the setup and then we apply our thermal paste I personally prefer to spread the thermal paste across the heat sink to make sure it's nicely spread across there and there's a good thin layer of thermal paste across the entire CPU to make sure that the cooling performance is good across all of it. Just take care when you're doing it not to make a massive mess or to cause overspill and then seat your cooler down over the top. Now pay attention to where the Noctua logo is on the left hand side and the way it's facing. You then put this down over the screws that are sticking off that bracketing that we put in place. Then you need to basically turn your screwdriver tool a couple of times on each of those screws and keep repeating on either side until you then can't tighten those screws anymore. So we're basically securing it down as secure as possible without over tightening. So be careful not to over tighten. At some point you should feel it stop and then you stop as well. Then we mount the fans to it and you'll see that there are metal hooks on the fans that basically secure the fans to the fins on the radiator. So you basically just need to notch the fans as I am facing the correct direction. So the front of the fan faces towards the right across the ram. So it's pulling air from the front of your case. Make sure both fans are facing the same direction so you can see the labeling on them. Then we use the Y splitter cable that's included in the box to take the cables from both of these fans and put them into a single connection that you can then plug into the CPU fan header on your motherboard. This will then allow your motherboard to control the speed of both of those fans and cool your CPU. So when the CPU gets too hot, the fans will ramp up and they'll speed things along. Now there are some low noise cables included in the box which you can use an alternative, but I found that you get better performance out of the cooler with the standard connections like this. And then you can just seat the motherboard into your case, in this instance a deep cool CH560 digital, and secure the motherboard down. 
Obviously, you'll see that the cables are a little bit messy, so we need to push them towards the back if we can a little bit and tidy things up, but otherwise, a fairly good install. Obviously, also, we can still access the RAM, which is really nice for this cooler, and you can see there's plenty of room in the case as well, despite the size of the cooler, and it is surprisingly good at the job, and hopefully you found this video useful, and if you have, smash that subscribe button and drop me a comment down below. Don't forget to check out links in the description to find out more. Thanks for watching. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.